Okay, how about, did you watch Homeland? After. I didn't. <gasps> oh, have you been asked that before? I haven't. Hi friends, here's what happens when I ask Wilson Cruz about his My So-Called Life co-star, Claire Danes. You'll love it. I don't want you to say the same things that you've I told will. everybody else. You have to tell me something completely different. Okay about my so-called life and well, i that's need gonna to be know, hard because i feel like i've talked about you, that that's what my I'm doing. you've life. said i know you've talked about your whole life so we need to talk instead about um what aspect of it okay how about did you watch homeland after i didn't <gasps> oh have you been asked that before i haven't um why not ah uh. Um, there was a moment when I was going to be on Homeland and it didn't happen for some reason. Um, and then I just got really petty and I didn't watch. <laughs> and then so many years passed that I, I just didn't, I didn't watch. And I love her and she knows this. This is not a secret that she's going to hear. Like if she listens to this, um, we've talked about it, but, um, wait, wait, okay. So it was the first season you were supposed to be in. It was the very first. Who season. were you going to be? Do you know? It was this person who, um, that she trusted. I'm trying to remember back that, there, that she trusted who ended up, um, double crossing her. Okay. It, it was someone that was like a friend of hers and was a partner maybe to her. So did you talk to her about mm -mm. this before? So she didn't even, okay. So you were not in touch at that mm -mm. point and you were like, oh, I'm scoring a role, mm -hmm. but was it, but it was, it was first season you said, so do, was it already, so. it was already wrapped. Like you didn't, it wasn't big yet. You know what no. I mean? So, but you knew it was just a show called Homeland. Yeah. And then you didn't get it and then it came out and you were like, ugh, can't do it. Um, yeah, but now, you know, now I have all of these seasons to catch up right, on, right? right? Like I can binge it. But also it was like in your face all the time because it was such a all big show. All the time. So it's like there's constant And I never had any doubt that she was brilliant in it because she's brilliant yeah. in everything. Uh -huh. Like she's, she was the first, um, like genius I ever met. Oh, like a real life genius. I feel like she's in, oh. I think she, I feel like she's in, and as a, as an actress that she's genius. I really do. Uh, I think very few people, I think that of very few people, but there was something, there is something very, um, like she can't even, she doesn't even know. Uh huh. She doesn't even know what she has, right? She like just it's just, it it's just it. her. It's just part of who she is. Like she has, it's all so very accessible to her and um, I have to work on it, right? Uh -huh. Like I, 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 I spend a lot of time on my material. I feel like she does too, of course, but she has access a lot faster. Got it. I just think it's genius. It's genius. So you don't think it's emotional, some sort of emotional thing? I feel like when you're doing that at 13, uh -huh. which is what she was doing at 13. Oh, so you saw it back then, right? Well, obviously, that's when you worked with her. She was 13 when we made the pilot. Wow. And I, rem and I was 19, and I remember thinking, this person is an alien. <laughs> wow. And that, that makes sense because she was insanely good. She was 13 playing 15. Like they were asking her to imagine. Right. And play things that she hadn't even done. She's talked about this. Her first kiss was with Jared Leto. That's right. I did. That's right. I said, right. Say and that. you watch that scene and she allows herself all of that. And she shares it with all of us. Mm. Could you imagine if your first kiss was with a heartthrob like Jared Leto and they were filming it? No way. How many people would allow themselves to be seen in that way? Yeah, especially at that age at when that you're age. so vulnerable. That's what I'm talking about. Jeez. That's why it's genius. You're going to be blown away by her when you watch Homeland. Oh, I. It's really, no doubt. I mean, she's really good. I mean, the whole show, you, are you gonna, I have to tell you, you're going to have to watch it now. I'm t like giving you homework that you have to watch Homeland. I love that you, that you asked that. Um, so anyway. I'm glad that I asked you that because, <laughs> again, I, you know, I don't like to ask you the same things that I know that you've answered a million times, but I'm surprised nobody's asked you that. Yeah, because I would have thought it was. Yes, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, no. But no, no. And I didn't have Showtime either for a long time. Oh, OK. Remember, as before streaming. Yeah. Like, 
Yeah. You had to have it. Right. No, <laughs> or you, you buy had to buy DVD it. Or right, something. right. It was definitely a thing, a separate thing that you got on, well, on your regular TV or whatever. And I was poor. So I guess you didn't watch Dexter <laughs> then either at that time. I did not watch Dexter. Dexter's back now. I know. <laughs> I know. I did not watch Dexter. Um, Dexter was good, I have to say. Or Six Feet Under, you did not watch then? Six Feet Under was on oh, HBO. Oh, wait, that was HBO. That's and right. And I watched every moment of that. Okay, that too was really a good show. That season finale is <gasps> the best hour of television in the history of television. I've mentioned this before on the show because that's a fact. It's a fact. That when you come... Now, I'm going to give you another best finale. So I have two. Ooh. One is Six Feet Under mm -hmm. and the other is The Americans. Did you watch it? I didn't finish The Americans. Why not? I need to finish it. I just, you know, you just, I think I got, how many oh, seasons were so there? So you stopped in season three, I'll bet. There no. were five, I think. I think I got through season four and then I just haven't done five yet. I'm surprised because it got. I think I started to get busy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I'm telling you. That's why I'm watching stuff now. Yeah. Uh, because I, ca I catch up on stuff. So I think what you're going to do, I'm going to give you a little menu of what you're going to do. Next. So you're going to watch, you're going to finish The Americans, but you're going to have to recap yourself. Okay. Remember everything. And then you're going to go start Homeland right after that. Okay. And this is my, so this is my prescription. And you're going to get over it. You're going to get over the fact that you didn't get the role. Because oh, no, you I'm over it. I'm I know, totally I'm <laughs> joking. I'm totally kidding. I know you got over it. I was it. bad, though, at the time. I was like, of course. I think I needed that job. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but you would have probably been killed off early on anyway. Most That's people the, were. I, mean, I get, do you understand who you're talking to? I die in everything. People love to see me die. <laughs> I died in Rent. I died on Ally McBeal. I died in Supernova. I died in Star Trek Discovery. Wait, I don't remember. I watched Ally McBeal too, but I don't remember. Who were you on Ally McBeal? I don't really talk about it a lot because it's not a role that I would play today, but oh. I played a trans um, prostitute on Ally McBeal oh, okay. the very first season. Here's something that people don't know. All right. I, um, I filmed that episode while playing Angel in Rent in Los Angeles. Wow. So I would spend, it took two weeks to do the episode be, because it was a it was pretty uh, dramatic episode for that for them, that season, especially their first season. Um, and I played this prostitute that Allie kind of takes under her wing. And you think for most of that episode that this is a new character on the show. Um, and then they kill her. Oh, so it was one episode? Yeah. Oh. But people really got attached to this person, I have to tell you. They got really attached to this character. Like, it was devastating for people. Like, I still hear about it. Oh, my God. So it really resonated. It did. So it should. It was really moving to me. But, oh, yeah. But you wouldn't play that character today. No, because we need to have trans mm -hmm. people playing those characters, right? Like, I can try and understand i did the best i could to understand uh -huh. what that is to feel gender dysphoria to um i think i i mean and and i was clearly successful at it but i i think if a trans person had played that role they would have brought their lived experience to that that would have been different and probably more in tune with the actual experience all right so that tells me there needs to be more characters like that yes for people to give you the feedback that they have for yes. one ep episode for sure how about Grey's anatomy Oh, I loved that. Every time I think about that job, I think about the fact that I've been in this industry for almost 30 years. And I, I tell you, there are people who will, always, who will come up to you and be like, we're going to work together one day. And we never do. I can give you names of people that I won't. But, you know, but, oh, Wilson, you and I are going to work together. And it's been 30 years. I haven't heard. So we're talking about like producers, directors, yeah, that type? Right. OK. Um, Shonda Rhimes, I met. Uh, couple years before that episode um and she was like you're gonna be on Grey's I need you on Grey's and I was and you know I was so jaded at that point I was uh -huh. like thank you <laughs> two years later she remembered phone rings I wrote something for you um and I got word like really quick it, you know I didn't have a lot of notice I showed up and there was this beautiful monologue about this man who had worked his whole life for the right to marry his partner. Mm -hmm. And it had a, a funny tilt to it as well. Um, and I got to work with one of my favorite actors 
of all time, which is Sada Ramirez, um, who's a friend of mine. Um, and we got to share that really beautiful scene together. That's very cool. That's a great story. It's a great story. That it says a lot about Shonda Rhimes. Yeah, that yeah. is interesting. So you, so in Hollywood, basically, you've you've heard a lot. People say a lot. Mm. People tell you a lot. Mm. But you're still an optimist about people. Yes. Even though you, they don't always come through with what they promise. Yeah, because I think, I honestly think people are doing the best they can. Mm -hmm. Even in terms of this vaccination, I still think people are doing the best they can. I just wish we weren't dictated by fear uh -huh. so much. But um, I do think that people are good at their at their at their at foundation. Their mm -hmm. I do too. So there's so much more to my talk with Wilson. We talk about being alone when his heart was broken and why this is a major turning point for him for a few different reasons. So if you wanna catch our big talk, there's a one hour podcast. I put a link in the description below. Thanks for watching, I'm Kara. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Drop a comment or two. I read the comments as you should know by now. So uh, drop a comment, let me know what you think about Wilson, this talk anything in general, and uh, I'll see you for the next talk.